Hello and welcome again. This is a continuation of the previous video, which is a proof of why the RSA works. Now, if you just are watching this video, I suggest you go back and watch the previous one because then you will be extremely confused if you start the proof right here. So go ahead and watch this video if you haven't done it and then come back to this one, which is, which is the second part or the continuation of the proof of the RSA. Now, in the last video, I ended up proving that y to the e is congruent to x modulo n. That's what we wanted to prove. This is proving the actual, that when you take the cipher text y and take it to the d power, then that gives me back the plain text. Now, this proof depend, depended on the fact that the GCD, let me scroll back here, the GCD between x and n was equal to 1. Now, there's another case when that is not equal to 1, and that's the one that we're going to uh, consider now here. So remember, if you haven't watched the previous video, go ahead and watch it, because then uh, this will be confusing for you if you don't do that. So I'm going to go into the second case. So the second case will be that the GCD between X and N is not equal to 1 in that case. So if it's not equal to 1, that means I cannot use Euler's uh, theorem with N and X. So I have to devise some, kind, some other uh, technique to prove that I still have that y to the d is congruent to x modulo n. So we'll prove exactly the same thing, but now under this condition. Now let's remember what n was. Now remember, for the RSA, the n here, which is where we take modulus, is always a product of two primes, p and q, where p and q are different primes. So p, q are prime numbers, and they are different from each other. So p is not equal to q. Now, assuming that the GCD of x and n is not equal to 1, is meaning that uh, the, the GCD between X and PQ is not equal to 1 because N is PQ. If it's not equal to 1, then the GCD between X and PQ has to be P, Q, or PQ. And why is that? Because remember what the GCD is. The GCD is the largest divisor between X and PQ. So in particular, it has to be a divisor of PQ. Because P and Q are prime numbers, the only divisors of this PQ are P, Q, and PQ, positive divisors. So that's, that's why we have this possibility. So it has to be a divisor of PQ, so it has to be either P, Q, or PQ. That's the only possibility. It could be 1, but we are under the assumption that it's not equal to 1. So we have these three possibilities. Now, I'm going to say that this one is not, uh, this is not, uh, a possibility and the reason it's not a possibility is because of the way we are doing the RSA. Now remember that the RSA requires that this x which is my plain text is less than n, is less than the modulo. So x has to be less than the modulo. So x cannot be and the reason is because x cannot be is less than n. Now if you assume that the GCD is PQ then that will mean that PQ or n in this case because that, this will be n will divide x, and that's not possible because x is strictly less than n. So this possibility here, uh, p times q, is not a possibility for the GCD between x and pq. So it has to be either p or q. Now, uh, so this is what we have here, right? The GCD between p and q is p or q. Now, we can as we're going to assume that the GCD between uh, x and pq is p. It could also be q, but if you do the proof for p, the proof when you assume that the GCD is equal to Q is exactly the same. You just change the letter P into the letter Q and the argument is exactly an exact copy of what the argument will be for this case. So we're going to assume safely that the GCD between X and PQ is equal to P. Now, so let's do that. So if the GCD between uh, X and PQ is equal to P, meaning that this is the largest divisor of both. So in particular, this P will be a divisor of x, so p, remember that this notation means divide, so p divides x. So if p divides x, what that means is that x is a multiple of p, which is what this equation here says. So x is equal to p times t for some integer t, uh, which it doesn't matter what it is, but we know that it exists. So I'm going to call this equation here 7, and this we will use it in a second. Now. I'm going to make this claim, and of course I have to prove it, because every every time you're doing a proof and you make a claim, if it's not obvious, then you'll have to prove it. So these things are not obvious, so I have to prove it through those things. So I have to prove first that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo p, just with p, 
and x to the ed is also congruent to x modulo q just with the q okay let's do that so the proof i'm going to prove this one first uh, mod with the modulo p and then i'm going to prove this one later and after i prove these two things i'm going to show you why the conclusion is going to follow from these two things so there's a little bit of extra work i have to do from these two once i prove this two a little bit of extra work so let's get into this one now so i'm going to prove that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo p now from seven which is this equation here i know that x is equal to p times t that's from seven this is right or down over here then what that means is that x is congruent to zero modulo p and the reason for that is because if p devices no, one of the numbers then that number is congruent to zero modulo p now if you unravel this what this means is p divides x minus zero which is the case because p divides divides x right and that's what we have here p divides x now x to the ed will be congruent to, to zero to the ed modulo p and the reason is because i just take this equation and i take the ed power on both sides and remember you can do that when you have a congruence so both of these things are zero and by transitivity of the congruence i have that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo p and that proves this claim here so i prove that claim now the next thing i have to show here is that this is true that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo q so let's do that one so the proof of that one will go like this so we have to prove that x to the e is congruent to q to qx modulo q now i'm gonna say this again the gcd between x and pq is equal to p this is under the assumption we have and so what that means is that the gcd between x and q has to be one now why is that the case the case is because now remember that this q is a prime number so if it is a prime number the only positive divisor that it has by definition will be one and itself so one and q now so one and q could be uh the gcd of x and p because if it's a if it's a gcd of a greatest common divisor between x and x x and q has to divide x and q if a device q has to be one and q but it cannot be q because if q is the gcd then q will divide x in that case then this won't be the gcd between p q and x because if q divides x and i'm saying that p divides x then the gcd then will be p q which is not possible so i'm saying that is p so then i have this now if because i have this that the gcd between x and q is equal to one then i can apply the euler's theorem with x and q and what euler's theorem says is if you take this number x to the phi of q power that will be congruent to one modulo q that is this euler's theorem and remember the euler's theorem only works if the basis here has no common factors with the modulus which is exactly the case here because i have this conclusion now what is phi of q now remember one of the things we saw earlier is that phi of q is the number of numbers that are less than q that are relatively prime prime to q which is q minus one um, so you can check that very easily so basically what we have here i replace this phi of q by q minus one which is this here so that i have this conclusion here so i'm going to call this one eight now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to write down what x to the ed is now this is a formula that i wrote down in the previous video which was formula number four now if you don't remember, if you don't remember what the formula was is that ed is actually equal to this one plus k phi of n and the reason for that is because go go ahead and back if you don't remember watch that video and i explain in detail why this ed has to be equal to one plus k phi of n with this k here is an integer so that's from for from four which was in the previous video now if we use that then i can use lots of exponents here to uh, write down this x to the one plus k phi of n in this way so it's going to be x to the first power which is the one here and x to the phi of n q uh, k and that's modulo q now but let's recall what is phi of n here so what is phi of n is phi of p times q a theorem we prove uh, says that phi of p times q is p minus one times q minus one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this fact that i have here the phi of n is p minus one q minus one and i'm going to replace it here in this exponent 
and I still have the congruence, of course. So what that will mean is that this x to the ed will be congruent to x, and I replace this phi of n by this expression, which is exactly what I have right here. Now, uh, so if I have this now, right here, so this is a congruence that is true, I'm going to manipulate again this in uh, this exponents that I have here, and I'm going to put the q there, I'm going to just leave it as the first power, and then p minus 1 times k, so I have this. Now, remember, what is x to the q minus 1? Because x to the q minus 1 is a formula that I have here, x to the q minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo q, so I can replace x to the q minus 1 in a congruence by 1. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take this x to the q minus 1 and I'm going to replace it by 1. So if I multiply them, then I get x again. So the conclusion then will be that x to the ed, which is started here, all these congruences, is congruence to x modulo q. Okay, let's recall what we did. Now, this proof is a little bit longer. So probably you have to pay a little bit more attention on what we are doing. Okay, so we proved so far the following thing. So we prove, so we have shown that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo p. And also x to the ed is congruent to x modulo q. Now, we know that the GCD between these two things, p and q, is 1 because these are two different primes. So if it's a prime, it has, the only divisors are 1 and themselves. So the only common divisor that they have will be 1. So the GCD will be 1. Now, there is a theorem and number theory, which uh, I didn't study before, but there's something that is true. If you have a congruence and these things here are the same, so it's the same number here, here, and this number agrees with this number, and this number is that one, and these two things here, uh, the GCD is equal to 1, then you can make the conclusion that this x to the ed, or whatever this number is here on the left, is congruent to that number modulo the product of these two things. Now, I'm not going to prove that result. Uh, you will have to believe me that that is a result in number theory. You can look it up. It's very related to the Chinese uh, remainder theorem. So if you look at that online, you will see that there's a strong relation there. But that theorem is true. If the GCD between these two numbers is 1, then these things are congruent modulo the product of these two things. And that only happens when this GCD is 1. Now, so what that means is that x to the ed is congruent to x modulo pq. But remember that pq is just n because that's the way we took n in the RSA. Now, from 3, which is an equation that I had at the beginning, we know that x to the y to the d is congruent to x to the ed modulo n. Now, if you don't remember that, you have to go back and watch that video again to realize what this means. Now, this is basically just what Bob is doing. is taking the ciphertext, I think it did uh, deep, uh, the deep power there. Now, but let's look at these two things here. So x to, the e, x to the ed is congruent to x modulo pq, and x to the ed is congruent to y to the d modulo n, exactly the same modulo. By transitivity, because these two things are equal, then what that means is that y to the d is congruent to x modulo n. So I finally proved my goal, which was this one, which is basically saying that when you take a cipher text and you take it to the d power, you will get back the plain text when you do it modulo n. This will finish the proof of saying why the RSA works. Now, I know that the second part is a little bit longer, so if you need to watch it again and then rewatch the first part and go ahead and do it, uh, it was a little bit of a long proof, but I wanted to do it because it's important to know why these things work. And the reason it works is all because of math, or it's all because of number theory. So it's a beautiful application of mathematics, this RSA. So I'm going to stop the video now, and in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss a fast exponentiation. And remember that is required because when you do encryption and decryption in the RSA, you take you have to take a number or a ciphertext or the plain text and raise it to a power, which is usually a really long power. So we have to discuss that fast exponentiation. So I'll discuss that in the next video, and so I will say goodbye for now.